Urban Therapy with Sun, Sun752, and this is your daily go get number 559 for April 14, 2016. Tonight we want to talk about putting sugar in the cornflakes, hot dogs, and the oodles and oodles. Y'all know back in the day, by, by the way, this is a throwback show. It's Throwback Thursday, April 14th, Throwback Thursday. This is my throwback so um, sweatsuit. I was wondering, how far do you have to go back for something to officially be a throwback? I think I got this in 2002. That sound about right. Yeah, about 2002. So it's mm, 13 years old, 14 years old. 14 years old, on the 14th. This t-shirt, Maurice Malone. Black designer, you know what I mean? Little hip hop designer back in the day, back in the back in the nineties. This I had this shirt since 19, 1997. Easy, you know what I'm saying? I always supported black on black. I'm, all, I'm always gonna be like that. I'm always about that. But anyway, so back in the day, y'all know we had to do certain things as we was growing up, as we was coming up. We had to learn how to do things a little better. We had to do things to make things taste better. You know, when you were a kid, one of the first things you learn how to improve on is food. Because kids are always eating food. That's why they call them rug rats when you're just an infant. You know, because you're on the you're on the ground and you're looking for some for things to eat. Like a baby crackhead. You know, like a crackhead looks for crack. You know, you might see a crackhead on on all fours looking for anything that looks like a rock. You know, they're out of their mind. Like, you know, kids are not like that, but they learn through smell, touch, and taste, their natural senses. So, when we're younger, one of the things that we like to do if we're stuck in the crib or whatever, is we like to eat. So, we'll find things to cook. Now, if your mom was anything like my mom, she bought the good cereal, but she bought the good cereal when she felt like buying the good cereal. We wasn't strapped for cash or nothing like that when, when I was in single digits. You know what I mean? The struggle didn't come till later when I was a teenager. <laughs> but, but we wasn't strapped for cash. I used to always wonder, how come we couldn't just get the Apple Jacks every time? That was my favorite um, cereal, Apple Jacks. So how come we couldn't get Apple Jacks every time you went to the market? Why? But she didn't. Just every now and then she would buy this healthy cereal. So sometimes we had to eat grape nuts. Sometimes we had to eat cornflakes. Sometimes we had to eat... Uh, Anyway, non-sweetened cereal. I guess the healthy stuff or whatever. Grape nuts, though? Is that even... What kind of cereal is that? It's like... Uh, garbage. With a name like Grape Nuts, you be thinking that's, that's, that shit is going to be like really good, but it's not. It's just all right. Like, it ain't it ain't terrible, but... It, put some sugar in the Grape Nuts. That's what we would do. We would put sugar in anything that we didn't like the taste of. That's what kids do. You know what I'm saying? That's how you made things taste better when you was a kid. So anything sweet, we was going for it. And it, the sugar was a little bit better back in the day. It ain't like that high, fruit, high fructose corn syrup that we have going on now. Back in the day, the sugar was sugar. The texture of it was better, and it didn't make you like crazy, crazy fat. Remember how we used to think that people was fat back in the day, and we look at pictures of them back in the day, and they, they don't look nothing like the fat people of today? That's very indicative of the way that food is designed now. They're ch they changing the molecular structure with the food and all of that. That's why we have all these crazy food allergies and peanut allergies. How many people, back in the day, how many people did you know had peanut allergies? You know, I've been having a discussion with some people at work about this for the past couple of days. I don't remember knowing anybody when I was in school you know, elementary school, middle school. I don't know anybody that couldn't eat a, a, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I don't know anybody that couldn't eat peanuts or any other type of nuts. I never heard of nut allergies until the 2000s, really. Never heard of it. You know, now it's a serious thing and it's very, very prevalent. But that kind of tells me that that's indicative of what's, what's going on with the food. But forget about all that. Forget about all that. It's throw, Throwback Thursday. And we're talking about when we would put the sugar in the pancakes or make a sugar sandwich. I used to take some sugar. See, sugar can make anything better. We would take some sugar back in the day and um, put it on bread and I would ball the bread up. You know what that was? That was a ghetto donut. <laughs> a ghetto donut. And it was good. You know, you, you, my, my thoughts with any bread that, that is mushed and mashed together. Yeah, it's like cake. 
<laughs> so, you ain't got no real cake. You make yourself a little donut, sugar donut, and you if you really want to get fancy with it, put some syrup in it. If you really really want to get extra stupid crazy fancy with it, add some cinnamon. You want to mess it up? You want to mess up everything that you just um um just just uh, created? Put some vanilla ass extract in there, cause vanilla extract smells great, but it tastes terrible. I don't know how it makes things taste better after you bake it. I don't know the science on that, but I know if you try to, if you know, you smell some vanilla a extract and you're thinking about the the taste of vanilla, like vanilla ice cream or whatever, and you taste van vanilla a extract and it tastes like earwax. Like, what the fuck? how can something that smell that good taste that terrible? But that's what it was. So what we got? Oh, oh, the oodles and noodles. Now you know, y'all know oodles and noodles is a cheap meal. Now, in the seventies, when they used to have the oodles and noodles, well, it, before oodles and noodles ever came out, they they were the Chinese noodles. They weren't even called ramen noodles. You know, they were just Chinese noodles. They didn't have any American writing on them or anything like that. And you know, we would go around there to to the uh, when the corner stores were ran by the Koreans and we would buy those buy, buy those noodles and they were really really good when oodles and noodles came out they were like cheap they didn't taste right you know what I'm saying like I, I thought they taste really cheap and they were they, and they cost really cheap you know as as late as the early 2000s I think you could get like six packs of oodles and noodles for like a dollar they're cheap so you know that there's no, no nutritional value in it but Oodles and noodles is one of those meals that you can make when you when times are hard and you need to make ends meet and you gotta get something on your stomach, you know. Um, if you're away in college, oodles and noodles was like, man, we ate so much of that garbage. We ate so much. I swear, when I when I got graduated college in 1993, I vowed I would never eat oodles and noodles ever again, ever. Few years went by and then we reconciled. <laughs> Not because I had to. It was, I missed the stuff that I used to put in the oodles and noodles. Now I wouldn't put the hot dogs in the oodles and noodles. I wouldn't put meat in, in the oodles and noodles because, to me, I, I believe that you had to keep it as cheap as it was. Like I didn't think that that oodles and noodles deserved to get upgraded. Like you can't be putting good meat inside oodles and noodles because if you have good meat. Then you don't have no business eating oodles and oodles. At least that was my reasoning. But I would put like hot sauce in the oodles and oodles. And I and I would definitely rock out with the Lari's uh seasoning salt. I would definitely throw that in the oodles and oodles. You know, things like that, I'll rock out with. And 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 it was to me it was like soup. And that held me down for years. You know when I stopped eating oodles and oodles? I stopped eating oodles and noodles when I found out that mice only eat oodles and noodles as a last resort. Like, they not with all of that. Because that spoke volumes to me. Anything that bugs won't eat. I made a video about it, about this, by the way. And, you know, if you plug it in, if you Google it, uh, Daily Go get em um if bugs won't eat it, you shouldn't eat it either. Uh, it'll come up. And this is a very informative vi video. But anyway, if if mice, if rodents won't eat it, and you know they like scavengers. If they won't eat it, then that's not something that you should eat. Now, I'm just telling you straight up and down. Now, they will eat it, but they'll eat it as a last resort. Like, you mean to tell me that they'll eat your um, old newspaper before they'll eat the oodles and noodles? Or should I say ramen noodles? That ain't that ain't good. That ain't good. If bugs and rodents won't eat certain things, you shouldn't eat them either. Now you might be thinking that, well, we shouldn't be eating the same stuff anyway. But nature is as nature does, and when things are in nature untrained by humans. They are trained to do things the right way. 
we have freedom of will, and so we don't be doing stuff the right way. But I, I mean, I ain't gonna get into all of that. You know, we don't have enough time in this video. I was gonna talk about, you know, I, look, let's just run down some of the list of things that we used to do. My, my, my sister, my sister was the, like the best Kool Aid mixologist I've, I've, I've ever known. She, I, I would, I, I refuse to drink Kool Aid, and I always thought that there was something wrong with Kool Aid, but I would drink Kool Aid back in the day. You know, we all did, but well, most of us did anyway. But you know, putting natural lemons, like fresh lemons, squeezing them in the in, in, in the um, Kool Aid. When you think about how crazy that is, that's just like putting steak. That's like put, taking a T-bone steak, cutting it up, and putting it in the oodles and noodles. You got fresh lemons, make the lemonade. But no, no, we want cherry flavor, so we would do that. Can't forget, you know, shout out to the pliers on the TV. Now, the pliers on the T, you know, to change the channel on the TV didn't make the TV better. It didn't make it better, but it made it serviceable and it made it, it, it made things in a way that we could use them. One other thing, you know what I'm saying? Uh, when it came to the TV, shout out to anybody that was born back in the time that remembers a black and white TV. A black and white TV. Remember, it was a big deal to have a color TV. And like a 19-inch color TV was like big. That was like giant. Remember that? You know? Black and white TV. Think about how that played on our imagination. Because we couldn't see colors on TV, but we would watch that. So we had no idea how people looked in person unless we went out and saw them. Other than that, we had to sort of, you know, if somebody was light skinned, really, really light skinned, we didn't know, it was hard to tell whether they were black or white. Because of black or white TV. Something else, man. It's a hell of a phenomenon. Good things happen to those who wait. Great things happen to those who grind. And anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard, go for yours. And remember, one of the things that I wanted to get, wanted y'all to get out of this video is that back in the day, we had to do things to improve our lives. And we did it because we were creative. One of the things that technology is doing to us is it, it's, it's taking away a lot of our creativity, in my opinion. But those of us from back in the day still should have some of, a, some of ours. If we haven't succumbed to all of the technology and you know one one of, one of the things that you might want to practice practice memorizing some phone numbers again if nothing else is good for this you know there should be at least three phone numbers that you you should know by heart practice another three just saying this is good exercise don't forget about the speaking of good exercise don't forget about the mind right and body better fitness program this Saturday the 16th, April 16th, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come holler at us. Come get with us. Come exercise with us. Come um, improve yourself with us. Put yourself out there. Make yourself be great. And it's never too late. So I'll holler at y'all later. Peace.